All right, Travel Diaries, Las Vegas. It's my last night at Encore, and I think it's time that we discuss my crazy, indulgent, wild dinner at Mizumi. Uh, by the way, this is not going to be an ultra-polished video. This is my Travel Diary series where I just go one-on-one -on -one with the camera. I'm going to go over some of this video, talk about Mizumi. How did I spend $700? What did I have to buy in order to get there, and was it worth it? I still don't know. Maybe I'll draw a conclusion by going through this exercise here with you. So Mizumi is widely known as the ultimate high-end elite sushi Japanese place in Vegas. That's a really bold statement because there are so many competitors. You got Yellowtail, uh, you got Koi, you got Ketch, you got Nobu, you got Morimoto, and the list goes on and on. And after being at all those that I just mentioned, I will tell you that Mizumi makes those places look like McDonald's. I knew it was expensive. I looked at the menu ahead of time. I'm always looking at the menu ahead of time so I kind of know what I want. And I saw the prices and I'm like, wow. So again, I was mentally prepared, but I don't know what happened. I think that I was coming off two lower end hotels, Bally's and Treasure Island, which did not have a lot of dining options. And Encore is my number one rated favorite, best hotel in all of the strip. And I don't know, I think I just got in the mood and I don't know, just something hit me and I just went all in. So let's talk about it. Uh, Mizumi, just the presence of this place, just to kind of lead up to walking to it is really special. It's situated at the end of the hotel property at Wynn. So, it, you know, it kind of has a meandering way to get to it. And then it's anchored at the very end. And it just has a ton of presence, huge double doors. Uh, the facade is red and gold. And I was like, wow, if the outside is this beautiful, what is the inside going to look like? And I got inside and my jaw dropped. It was, it was awesome, like literally awesome. Reds everywhere, high ceilings, really ornate, high-end uh, Japanese Asian decorations, really cool mask everywhere. It had like a meandering snake type bar that took up the entire right side of the room. This place had its own waterfall, like its own dedicated waterfall for the restaurant. If you've been to Wind and Encore, you know that there's a Lake of Dreams and a lot of the restaurants share that attraction. Mizumi had its own dedicated waterfall huge open air window, everyone's gazing into it. The place was indescribable. I'm almost at a loss of words, like no word that I use will give this place justice. It was just uh, out of this world, really out of this world. So I'm like, okay, I looked at the menu and I'm looking at the ambiance. I'm like, okay, here we go. So I sat down and I ordered a burnt old fashioned. And I thought originally it was gonna be smoked, but I asked the bartender, he's like, nah, we don't smoke it. What makes it burnt is that we have black sugar that we import directly from Okinawa, Japan. And that's what gives it uh, the amazing flavor. I'm like, okay, well, let's do it. And I must tell you, I'm not an old fashioned fan. I see a lot of different iterations of it. I see them all the time because of the places I go to. But if I see a really unique one, I will order it. And I'm really glad I ordered this one. It really was one of the best old fashions I've ever had. Just for me to like it means it was really good. And I'll tell you the secret of why I liked it, and it was the black sugar directly imported from Okinawa. It was a game changer. I have my receipt here. That drink, the burnt old fashioned was 25. That's pretty high end for a Vegas drink, but I'm like, okay, that's tolerable. And uh, fun fact, I've been addicted to seaweed lately for like the past, I'd say two years. Just whenever I see seaweed, I'm ordering it. It's on my conviction buy list. I did make like a video about my conviction buy list. I think I was at Delano. Uh, or Delano. I should have put seaweed on there because I'm addicted to it. So they had like a seaweed and crab salad. So I ordered that without even thinking twice and it came out and uh, it was like the size of like a little mini saucer. And the preparation was amazing. The aesthetics were amazing. The dish had a ton of presentation and it was really beautiful, but it was so small. So that was 27 bucks. So the drink and the, uh, and the seaweed salad with crab was $52, so I was like, okay, uh, here we go. And looking back now, and again, I'm just going through this exercise with you, so I'm having some thoughts, I'm getting some clarity just by doing this video. It was the next two uh, things that I ordered that really set the path down the wrong way, or I should say the expensive way. So I looked at the bartender, I just glanced out of my eye when he was working, and he had what looked to be these multicolored shot glasses. It looked like a flight of something, and the shot glasses were beautiful. I thought they were multicolored, and I was like, what is that? And he goes, oh, that's our sake flight. And I'm like, oh yeah, you got a sake flight? And I go, where is it? Because I want to look at it. And he goes, well, we have two of them. We have a seasonal, and then we have a luxury one. Uh, one was pasteurized, and one was unpasteurized. I believe the luxury one, which is the one I ordered, 
uh, was unpasteurized. I ordered the sake flight. There were three different sakis. So one was called uh, Mount Cherry. One was called King of Peony. And then the one that I fell in love with, oh, why did I have to fall in love with this one? Was the Demon Slayer. I mean, first of all, it has the coolest name, Demon Slayer. The other two names were Mount Cherry and then King of Peony. And not only did it have the coolest name, it was by far the best tasting. I can say this right now emphatically, that it was the best sake I've ever had. Wow. So more on that sake to come later. So I had the old fashioned and then I had the sake flight. And now it's just throw caution to the wind. So I'm looking over the menu, and if I ever have sashimi, I like to have the sashimi right away. Because it's always better to eat protein first than carbs, because your body tends to process and use what it intakes first. So I always like to fill up with protein first. And plus, I don't like eating sashimi on a full stomach. I really like to enjoy it, and I like to be comfortable. So I usually order it earlier in the meal than later. And I looked at the menu, and I saw something that I've never seen outside of Japan. They had Kamatoro. I had to do a double take on it because I've never seen it before on an American menu. You know I talk about Toro, Chu Toro, and then O Toro. Uh, that's good, better, best. Toro, Chu Toro, O Toro. That's the fatty belly of the tuna with O Toro being the fattiest. I talk about O Toro all the time. Usually it's on my conviction buy list as well, but there is one better than O Toro and that's Kamatoro. The reason you never see it is because the fishermen or the people at the dock usually take it for themselves. It's that coveted. So you have to buy the whole fish and then you have to make sure the fish is untampered uh, in order to get the Kamatoro. And there's only a few cuts of it per fish. So, uh, oh, and by the way, Kamatoro is not the belly, it's the fatty neck. So I saw the Kamatoro, it was market price MP, and I inquired how much it was and it was $45. And that's crazy, two pieces of sashimi for $45, it's insane. But here's how I justified to myself. This is really bad. The Otoro was only 40. So I'm like, ah, the Otoro is only 40. What's well, an extra $5? So I ordered the Kamatoro. It comes out and I take it down. I eat it. And I gotta tell you, I wasn't impressed. I mean, okay, it was amazing, but I didn't like it better than the Otoro. The Kamatoro is supposed to be the elite of the elite the fatty neck, the Ortoro is the elite of the elite of the fatty belly, but the Kamatoro is more expensive, it's supposed to be better. And I was like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Yes, it was amazing. It was delectable, it was buttery, it melted in my mouth, but I felt like I had better Ortoro before. I was like, you know what? Bring me two more of the Kamatoro, and I wanna try them next to the Ortoro, and then next to the Chutoro. That, that is where things went downhill, so. Two more Kamatoro for 45, two Otoro for 40, and then two Chutoro for 24. So I didn't want to add that up right now, but things are getting out of hand already. Okay, I think I'm probably already at what? Uh, well over 200. Okay, probably approaching 250 or 300 just by everything I've ordered already uh, with the sake flight and the, and the burnt old fashioned. So I went through that entire process to find out that I like the Otoro better. Okay, that was a really expensive exercise to go through all of that. Um, if I ever see Kamatoro and Otoro on a menu together, which is really rare, I mean, I've seen it twice in the last 18 months, one time in Japan and one time in Mizumi, so this probably isn't a scenario I'm going to encounter a lot. But if I do see them side by side again, I now know that I like the Otoro better. The Otoro was fattier, more buttery, more flavorful. The Kamatoro kind of tasted a bit more like Chutoro. So anyway, that's my Toro exercise. Now here's my mental state, okay? My mental state is I'm 300 in. I'm 300 in and I'm hungry, okay? Because I had a seaweed salad, the alcohol's making me a little hungry, and that sashimi is not gonna fill me up at all. So I'm feeling good with that old fashioned and the sake flight working on me. I'm kind of a lightweight. I mean, I don't drink a lot. So this is where things really go downhill. I'm like, well, I was at Bally's and I was at Treasure Island and I really didn't have any high-end dining experiences. I'm at my favorite hotel. Let's go for it, let's ramp things up. And wow, did I ramp things up. I went for the A5 Kobe beef straight from Prefecture, Japan, which is the specific region Kobe beef has to come from to be A5. This was $75 an ounce, okay? $75 an ounce, I ordered three ounces, which was the minimum. And by the way, you don't ever wanna order any more than three ounces because after three ounces, I was filled. The, the meat is a weird consistency because it's so high in fat. Like, it's so rich and so indulgent, 
It is surprisingly filling. And I don't know if I've ever had A5 Kobe from Prefecture. Like I know I've had some of the Kobe, but it hasn't been from that specific region. This is like the creme de la creme, all right? This is like the apex of beef. So I had to have it. And then they told me, I mean, this just sealed the deal. Then they told me that they could bring out a lava rock and have me grill it up right in front of myself on my own so I could cook it just the way I liked. And after they said lava rock, they didn't even have to finish the word rock. I was in. This was like the most engaging meat I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, it really is a delicacy. So I put it on the lava rock, grilled it up, had my fun. I'm really glad I did it. It was the most interesting, tasty, decadent, rich, filling meat I've ever had. I don't even know if I could eat it once a week because it is so indulgent. I didn't even know that steak could taste like that. It's crazy what they do through breeding and through feeding, but wow, it was, it was an experience. $225 later for only three ounces, I was actually getting pretty filled, but it was a pretty expensive way to get there. So I talked about the snow crab salad, then I talked about the Kamatoro, two of those, which is 90 bucks. The luxury flight was 60. I had the burnt old fashioned for 25. The Chutoro was 24. The Otoro was 40. And the Kobe beef was 225. So we're making our way down the menu. So I have three things left. I inquired about the Demon Slayer and I should not have done that. I wanted to buy a bottle for my own, for, for myself, for my personal collection. And he's like, yeah, this is so hard to get. Here's the bottle, here's what it looks like. Take a picture, try to get it. But we're even having problems getting it right now. So I, I took a photo of it. It's like, this is the last bottle we have. And not only is this the last bottle, like this is the last pour. And he just poured it. They even asked me, like I think that he thought we had rapport. <laughs> get it? I think he thought we had rapport, like because we're having a lot of fun ordering this stuff. And he just poured it. Now it was a double. All right, so he poured me a double and only charged me one. So he pretty much gave me the last of the Demon Slayer. I was really happy that he did that, but I thought it was really, really funny that he took it on his own volition to do it. So one more Demon Slayer, he gave me a double for $21. So now like internally, I'm thinking I'm probably at like 400. Uh, and I was like, well, what do you got left? Because I'm still hungry. Like after that sashimi and that beef, like yes, that beef was filling, it was rich, it was indulgent, but I'm still a little hungry. So I had him bring out uh, the shrimp and salmon roll. That was absolutely delicious. I'm really glad he brought it out. So now I'm filled. And that was $27, by the way. That shrimp and salmon roll was $27. And it's at the end, and I said, well, we got this far, right? We got this far, why not do a dessert? And he's like, well, I got a dessert for you. And he, and he goes, it's called the mask. And he says that it comes out like a traditional Chinese mask, but it's edible. And you gotta crack it open, and then the dessert unfurls. So I'm like, I'm in, I'm in. I love like novelty and experiential desserts. So, he brought out the mask and it was as advertised. It was beautiful, right? Like beautiful white porcelain chocolate, perfectly hardened candy with a red lipstick. I mean, looking at this thing, it's kind of scary looking, you know? Like it's so well done that it's actually kind of scary looking. And it was, it was amazing. I mean, not only was it fun to give that thing a whack, and I had to whack the thing. I had to whack it like a few times just to break it. It was not like creme brulee. Like I literally had to give that thing a forceful whack. And then when you do the contents unfurl and they expand, it was really, really cool. And plus, that's the type of mask, like a traditional Chinese mask that the entire place is decorated with. So that was kind of like a very storybook way to end my dinner. So the mask was 17. It was actually the cheapest thing that I ordered the entire night. Subtotal, $556. Tax, $46.57. Total, $602.57, $602.57. And then I threw on a $100 tip, which put me over $700. So was it worth it? You know, there are two sides to the coin. One could say that's extremely indulgent. You could have had five great dinners with that money. Um, it was frivolous and irresponsible. And I'd probably say you're right. But then the other side of the coin would say, when are you ever gonna have another dinner like that? It's good to let loose once in a while. Places like Mizumi are rare and those foods are even rarer. Why not indulge once in a while, especially at a place like Mizumi at Encore? And I agree with both. I feel it was a little irresponsible to spend $700 alone, but also what else do you get an opportunity for dinners like that and to make lifelong memories? And that dinner will stick with me for the rest of my life. It was unforgettable. Also, I'll say this before I go, if you go there with somebody else, a significant other, a friend, a colleague, whomever, and they know their way around a sushi menu or you know your way around a sushi menu, good luck walking out of there filled or satisfied with a bill under 400. It's gotta be impossible. I really feel that way. If you're able to do that, let me know. Or if you've been there and had a really, really nice filling dinner and left with it under 400, 
Um, you should be ordained. I mean, you should walk on water. I will nominate you for uh, person of the year because it's got to be nearly impossible. So that's my dinner at Mizumi. I will say that, yes, it is the best Asian sushi place I've probably ever been to, period, in the United States. Yes, absolutely. The quality of food, the atmosphere, the service, the menu, the creativity, everything combined into one. It's the absolute best place I've ever been to, emphatically. Not even a second thought. Do I think it's the best value? No, not at all. For a great value, I'd probably go with Otoro. Maybe like a catch or something like that. The lower rung is definitely a step down. It's weird saying that like Otoro and Ketch are on a lower rung, but everything is on a lower rung compared to Mizumi. So would I recommend going to Mizumi? No, no I wouldn't. You need to have an ultra sophisticated palate for sushi and you really need to know what you're in for before I'd recommend uh, Mizumi, generally speaking. If what I talked about sounds really fascinating and interesting and some of the dishes that I talked about register and resonate with you, then absolutely go.